This video will cover three major constitutional compromises that took place at the Constitutional Convention. By the end of the video, you should be able to answer the following question. How did the constitutional compromises affect the balance of power in the national government? Our first plan of government was called the Articles of Confederation, and it created a very weak central or national government. Our forefathers did that on purpose because they feared the tyranny of a powerful government. If you remember, that's why the American Revolution was fought to begin with. The problem was that the central government needs to have a certain amount of power in order to enforce laws and protect people, and the Articles of Confederation could not effectively do that. So in order to address the problems that were faced due to the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation, a meeting was convened in the summer of 1787. Delegates were sent from 12 states to the Constitutional Convention. Once gathered, it became clear very quickly that not everybody's going to agree about everything. Different states had different demographics, different economies that would cause them to have opposing viewpoints. The small states with less people versus the large states with larger populations did not see eye to eye. The northern states were more industrial, and the southern states had an agricultural economy. Again, this is going to cause a clash between the two groups. It quickly became clear that in order to successfully write a constitution, compromise was going to be needed. The first issue that arose was how many representatives to send to the legislative branch. Remember, that's Congress. Those are the guys who make the laws. Small states came up with the New Jersey plan that stated every state should send the same number of representatives. That's fair. Every single state sends two representatives and it's equal. Larger states came up with the Virginia plan and said, no, that's not fair at all. Smaller states have smaller populations and will be unevenly represented if everybody has the same number of representatives. New York has a huge population. Why should they have the same number of representatives as a small state with much fewer people? So what solution did they come up with? They created a bicameral legislature. What this means is a two house legislature. So Congress today is made up of both the Senate and the House of Representatives. The Senate is comprised of two representatives per state, which remember that's what the small states wanted. And the House of Representatives is based upon population. If you have more people in your state, you get to send more representatives, which is what the large states wanted. So this was definitely a win-win solution to the issue. In fact, it was a great compromise. And that's the name of this compromise is the Great Compromise. The second issue that arose was the question of slaves. Should they be counted for purposes of representation? Now remember in the House of Representatives, the more people you have in your state, the more representatives you get to send to Congress. The Southern states said, well, of course slaves should be counted. At the time, about 40% of the population in the South were slaves, so this would make a big difference in how many representatives they get to send. The North said, no, that's 
not fair. Slaves are not citizens. You don't give them any rights. They're considered property. And now suddenly you want to use them and count them for representation. So what was the solution here? The solution was to count every three out of five slaves. Three fifths of the slaves would be counted for purposes of representation. So the South got some of what they wanted, the North got some of what they wanted. This compromise was called the three-fifths compromise. It's a great name, it makes it very easy to remember the solution to this issue. Third and final issue that we're going to cover is based uh, on trade, questions of trade. So the question was, should there be a tariff on both imports and exports? Just as a reminder, a tariff is a tax. It's a type of tax. Imports are goods that come into the country from other places, and exports are products that are sent out of our country to be sold elsewhere. Southern states did not want tariffs on exports. They were an agricultural economy, again, and they sold raw materials to Europe. They didn't want to pay taxes on this, obviously. The North wanted tariffs on both. A tariff on imports protects manufacturers here in America, so they definitely wanted that, but they figured why not tax exports too? More money for the government. How was this issue worked out? The solution was that tariffs would only be imposed on imported goods. In addition, future legislation would require two-thirds vote of Congress in order for it to pass, rather than a simple majority. This would make it harder to pass laws about trade and would help protect the southern states. So. They were okay with it, and so was the North. This compromise is called the Commerce Compromise. All right, those are your three. Can you answer this question? How did the constitutional compromises affect the balance of power in the national government? For so hard paying attention, it's time for one of my corny riddles. Let's see if you can answer it. If you have eight apples in one hand and six oranges in the other hand, what do you have? Big hands. Did you get it? Huh? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, please like it and have a fabulous day.